going to just set it up on camera here because that's fun. It could be very relaxing for someone to set up a game with me. Um, and I would love the company for setting up a game right now. So we just finished um, Pendragon. We're going to play another game of Pendragon because that other one was very short. Um, made some poor choices on the Barbarian side just to kind of see what would happen. And maybe didn't like follow it up well enough. So what we did was we had them... They, they started out with some events that allowed them to um, get some settlements on the map right away which could have been good in the long haul because it, it can be kind of tough to get some like lasting map presence which are helpful to the barbarians um, but what that did was that allowed the um, meant they, they didn't get much prosperity off the map and, pros and so there was not enough of a ding to the duke's uh, victory margin so they won pretty quickly so we're just kind of resetting shouldn't take too long we're gonna have to go through space by space though but i think i got the prosperity all right get rid of these federati because i know they don't start on the map federati again i will say again these are barbarians that are working for the other side pen dragon is a game this scenario, anyway, starts in uh, 4th century England, where uh, Roman controlled Britain, Great Britain. Um, and there are two kind of Britain sides. There are the Dukes, which are the uh, military side, more the arm of Rome, Rome and the Civitatis, which is the civilian kind money guys and then there are also two barbarian sides there's the saxons who i think are a little more violent and the scotty they're more of the, the renown side renown is the currency the scotty we're keeping Sargin from the last game because he won so let him play again Let's see if he does so well maybe it's just that sarge is a really good player maybe that's why Happen the way they did. We gotta deconstruct the deck. Let's deconstruct the deck before we do finish up with the spaces and do the money and everything. So we gotta um, take out our epoch cards here. Early, early. Late early and the late separate, because that's important when you construct the deck. Epoch cards stop play, and um, if you're ahead after some certain activities during the first part of the epoch round, so you stop play and you do kind of some upkeep, and it's also where you determine victory. If you're, if you're above your victory margin at that point, you win the game. Asymmetrical game, so each side is going to win based on different things, and that those things can actually change throughout the game. We're stalling out here. Yeah, I've got a really bad internet connection at this part of the house, but this is the the only place I can really keep a game set up and not worry of have to worry about cats or children destroying it. So we're kind of stuck here. Sorry, folks. I wish I could, could have a better connection for you. Um, nothing I can do about that right now. I can't think of anything. Not real tech savvy either. Um, and this computer that I'm using, right? I guess one thing I could do, maybe, is I could move my table closer to where my other computer is and that one I, I can have hardwired in through like this power line plug thing that goes to the router which is on the other side of the house 
Um, that might be a little better. I could do that, but I tested the upload speeds. They weren't much different. So it's not much better than it actually would be. Joe D'Agostino's creation. So we're starting a new game. I'm not going to worry too much about perfect shuffling. It's not going to be perfectly random. These cards are uh, very difficult to shuffle. They are thick. And resistant to shuffling. But that will make them last longer. And this is a game I could see playing multiple times. But you don't actually, you know, have to shuffle the cards that often, right? Because you, it's not like uh, another card game where the games are quick. This last game we played was relatively quick, but typically, you know, this game probably could last a number of hours, especially if you're playing with a full complement of players who are learning it for the first time. Uh, let's get this bad guy down. So we'll mix up these epochs. These are our late ones. I'm not, I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna do it a different way. These are our late ones. We're gonna have three early ones. We gotta take one out. We're gonna do the full campaign again. That's just the way to play. We don't have a time limit. We can pause at any time, can't we? We can come back and play later. So we don't really have to um, worry about how long the scenario is. And I kind of like to see things develop. You can kind of appreciate like each stage of the game a little better that way too. Doing six piles, six epoch cards in the game. And the epochs have little events on them that take effect too. We didn't actually use that last time because I think victory, we the game ended on the first epoch, and victory is determined um, prior to the event, I believe. Unless I did something wrong, I do a lot of things wrong. <coughs> This is one of the more complex coin games, I would say, too. So. Beautiful. Now, these are the late, right? Is that what I said? Late, yeah. Now, I peeked at the card, but I didn't actually I have no idea what's on it because it's just a, it's like a wall of text. So there's not really any, I don't know why I'm shuffling that again. Okay, so this is what I need to shuffle. I need to shuffle one of these into here. The four cards. So there's five cards here. One of them is an epoch card. Could be any of the last five cards. Hope we get there. Hope we get to that last pile there. That's going to be the bottom of our deck. Take another one. Shuffle that in. Nice and easy. No need to rush it. Gently shuffle. Okay. Last one of the late epoch cards. I've never gotten to a late epoch card because I'm kind of trash at this game. Or maybe there's just certain sides I don't understand. It's really fun to play this game solitaire all four sides though. I would recommend it because you get to you get this like... Well, it's fun for me because exploration um, into a game is... is fun for me in this game if you have all, all four sides that you're kind of learning all four of them by operating them that's really fun I think you can do that while playing with others too I mean you kind of have to if you're gonna play well you have to know what other people's capabilities are and whatnot but I think the best way to do that because I'm biased for my what I will want to do anyway is to do it solitaire though coin games are really really fun with the full complement um, especially if you're all sitting around the table, not doing it online. Especially, I think probably less so this one. This one lacks one of the elements that um, a lot of them have, which is kind of more direct negotiation. There's no real direct way to transfer money. Um, 
resources from one faction to another. I really like the, the earlier ones that allowed for that, uh, you know, all four sides could pay each other to do stuff. Um, that, that led to fun. Now you could, you could make promises, like I'll let you keep this place and I won't bother you if you'll do this for me, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know if this is gonna be showing. Let's look at our other screen here. Can we see that? No, no, that's deck's totally not on there. Let's put the deck in the ocean. You can see that. There's our deck. Ocean Hibernicus. Okay, now we just gotta go through each space and put the right things down. Make sure everything's okay. Which means we're gonna have to go to this. Uh, petty Tyrants. So here's what we're looking at here. So Dumoni. We're good there. Nothing changed in Dumoni during the game. Duratrigi's guess. One town, one militia. Four prosperity, we're good there. One fort, one cavalry. One town, one militia, good there. See, this is kind of pretty. See how these colors there? That's the setup information for the spaces. Um, Regni. One fort, one cavalry. One, yep, nothing changed there. Uh, Kantiashi. Things changed there, but we kind of got it back to normal. Just a couple extra militia. Those folks don't need to be there. Uh, Londinium. I think we're the same there. Yep. Nothing changed there. Would have been a great place to raid, wouldn't it? It's even got an ocean connection. They could have just jumped in there. They could have taken that town, but they didn't. They were too focused on their little settlement thing. It was, an, it was a fun experiment. I would actually like to try that again and see if I could get it to work um, a little better than I did. Because I know my um, Britain play was suboptimal as well. So even with suboptimal play, I sent him. One militia. I'll do my little um, thing where I say that my pronunciation of these names is not going to be great. I could strive for greatness, but I just don't have time. I strive for mediocrity because I have time. Or maybe that's a cop out. Maybe I should make time. Maybe I could do something to make time, but you know, waste less time in other areas. Do what's important. Get my pronunciation right. Uh, Konovi? You're not supposed to have these fellows. One town, one militia. Those towns are so weak and undefended. So easy to get a coup de main in there. One fort, one cavalry. One town, one militia. I don't want to try to butcher that name. Uh, Saluris. Bish, bish, bish. Bish, 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 where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I just can't see it. Where am I going to show it? Oh, we're down here. That's how you do it. Okay. Then we're going up the coast. Damate. Good. Good. Dekongli. Good. Brigantes. Good. BC, good. The Borican, that's the one we have a lot more cavalry. That's kind of the military fort town, city. Um, we need another cavalry up here. And these last two cavalry go here. So the cavalry are all, all good. Um, yep, everything's looking, everything seems to be in order. Boxes are good. Everything's good. We are ready. Nope, we're not ready to play. We need to do our tracks. Set up our tracks. All right. So, nope. Dukes, zero. Scotty, six. Um, Saxon, ten. You're at 25 for the Britons. The Britons share their resources, and things are more expensive for them as well. 
markers, prestige zero, wealth zero, Saxon control zero, Britain control 40. Yep, that's right. I actually forgot to lower that last game. It should have been 38, I think. No, 39. Prosperity plus prestige is 80. That's really easy to, one to remember. Red victory pawn and blue victory pawn are in the right place. Roads are maintained. Everything's sunshine until the barbarians come. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to be right back, and then we'll get going on this second game. Oh, you know what? We're going to have to do a character draw. We're going to get to do a character draw. Something I really enjoy. Alrighty, so I shuffled the three people who lost last game back into the deck, so they could come back for another um, another go around. And because of my camera, my main camera placement, it's a little awkward to show you the picture. In that, I have to like lean over. And last time I did it, I didn't even get them in the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it to this smaller camera here. Here we have a mustachioed man. He's a cab driver named Dougie. Dougie's secret fantasy is to be on the Pro Bowlers Tour. An unusual fact is too forgiving in nature. Hmm. Pet peeve, drunken customers. Uh, I'd like to meet Dan Quayle. Personal motto, if you can't afford it, don't buy it. That's a good motto. I don't think buying on credit, especially if it's just for pleasure, is, is a good policy. Most proud of his son and daughter. Reputation in high school average. Three words that describe him are handsome, aggressive, and intelligent. If he's going to be an aggressive, let's make him our Saxon. Yes, you can actually see the Saxon picture. Right? Yeah. I think I actually have a good... I can make it so you can see all the real people, I think. Okay, next one. More facial hair. Okay. Here we have a chef caterer named Doc. What was this fellow's name? Dougie. So we have Dougie, Doc, and Sarge so far. Much smaller names. Small, simple names. Like Chan, Chang, which means little or nothing. Uh, secret fantasy to work in a carnival giving elephant rides. That's a nice fantasy. I could, I could see doing that, except I would feel bad for the elephants. Elephants are very intelligent. And I don't know that they would want to be giving rights, but maybe that's okay. I wish we could ask them. An unusual fact is he only wears silk underwear. Pet peeve can't stand tapping. <laughs> there was a, I think we had a character in the last game who was known for tapping. So it's a good thing. Well, maybe she'll come into this game. They're going to be at each other's throats. Um, you'd like to meet Ruth Gordon. I don't know who that is. Um, if you know Ruth Gordon, you'd like to contact me, please tell me who she is. Personal motto, never justify your actions. Simply do what's right in the first place. Mm. But what if someone doesn't understand your why you think it's right? Doc. I mean, I think that's a, a good, I, good notion. You know, try to do what you think is right. But sometimes you have to talk about why you think it's right. Maybe. Maybe help people understand your point of view. Uh, most proud of success of business, which is chef caterer catering business. Reputation in high school, solid. Three words that describe them are innovative, eccentric, dependable. Hmm. Um, he sounds like a Siwitati to me, though he could be a Scotty as well. Um, no, oh, I think maybe a Scotty. Yeah, the silk, he, he wears silk kilts. Can we see him? There we go. Okay. Let's do our last one. This one's gonna be a Siwitati, whether they like it or not, whether they're inclined towards it or not. There's a Siwitati coming out. And that Siwitati is going to be Bonzo. Bonzo, sales manager. Um, to be a, her fantasy is to be a famous um, Grand Prix driver. 
She loves the smell of skunk. I actually like the smell of skunk too. I've never not smelled it like sprayed in my face. I think I wouldn't like that, but if you know you smell it outside, I think it's pleasing. Uh, pet peeve: people who pretend to be happy. I'd like to meet Einstein. I think people who are pretending to be happy, they might have some. They could have altruistic motives for doing that. Maybe they want to. They, they want you to think that they're happy so that you don't feel bad. That could be or the like the less charitable um, interpretation would be that they want to pretend to be happy so that um, you think they've got their stuff together, right? She liked to meet Einstein. Personal motto: Fake it till you make it. Well, that's kind of like pretending to be happy, right? She she is a complex individual. She's got lots of contradictions in her. Bonzo does. She's most proud of her legs. Reputation in high school is unsure. Hmm. I kind of see a contradiction there too. Three words that describe her are weird, fabulous, and wild. All right, we got some fun folks in the mix here. And Bonzo's going to actually be getting to go first on this card. Kintago. She can place a hill fort, two mil militia, and two comitates in a hills region coastal to Ocean Hibernicus. So that's right along here. That's pretty good that, that she could get some comitates. That's her like special troops that are much better than her militia um, that are normally kind of hard for her to get. Um, let's let's focus on the goal here. What does she want? What she wants is control. Komatatis would help her keep control, right? And having a, the hill fort down would help her keep control. Might not be bad to have it here too because um, there's this town that's poorly protected. I think keeping the towns intact is a good idea. You gotta have a settlement to have control and towns are her main way of getting resources. Um, and this particular town is kind of in danger. Got a couple towns that start off kind of in weak positions. So if she could get some defense down here, that would be kind of good. That'd be a nice thing for her. So let's, let's just go in and take that event. No, nope, we're not going to take the event. It's necessarily, it's good to think about what you would do instead of taking the event. And this one would let the Scotty place a settlement in three war bands. That's what happened last game if they took the event. Um, oh, she could muster a few troops. She could start ruling. That might be a good thing for her to do. That's how she gets wealth on the map. Or wealth on the, the track and wealth if you recall from last time if her wealth is high enough above the prestige of the dukes then the um, dominance of the of the Roman rule the Imperium track um, shifts to civilian and that's she needs it there in civilian in order for her to win and that keeps the dukes from winning as well because the dukes have to have it in military rule they're the military arm um, so she would like to shift that if she could uh, that way they don't get like a... Oh, hi, Chad. You're back. Uh, sorry, I didn't see that sooner. Um, yeah, I'm glad the audio is better. I... I've... Yeah, it was... Uh, there was a like an extra mic th input that was in there as well. Um, and, I don't know. It's it's weird. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. It's hard on me. So I was talking about wealth. Wealth's important. We saw last game, you know, if you don't get your wealth high, th that's kind of your main way of keeping the Dukes who start off the game ready to win. Uh, that's the way to keep them from winning. So does she want to spend her time doing that, though? She could do... She could get three wealth. It just seems like getting the Komitates down the, on the map is just too appealing. And, let the Scot and that also lets the Scotty have an, an action plus full feet. Uh, uh, full action plus feet, which they can raid to get the, the uh, plunder, the prosperity off the map, which can help. Um... She's kind of sabotaging her her um, people in order to keep the dukes from winning. That's what's going on. Uh, because she doesn't want them to be too powerful, right? So she's like, let the barbarians come in, give them a little, little bone, and I'll just kind of help keep what's mine. I think it's a good move. But then again, I'm not very good at this. So we'll put a hill for it here in Dumoni. Two militia. 
and two komitatis. Now I should check to see if she can actually put the komitatis in there if they are not in available because they start the game not available. So we're going to check the playbook here and we're looking at card 32. They are very thorough. You have a you think a card is unclear they they have your back. They're going to explain it to you with more words. You know, the cards kind of tend to be self-explanatory. There are there's something that could contradict the rules here. Uh, tips: the event can only place pieces that are available or already on the map. Okay, so that makes it a lot less exciting. She would just get to put a hill fort and two militia down instead of the Komatatis. If she had the Komatatis available, that might be actually appealing to do because I think they cost wealth to get on the map and you want to keep your wealth. That's important. Uh, but you got to use your wealth too. But you want, it, you want it to be higher than the prestige as I've kind of gone on and on about in a circuitous faction. 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 Place one hill fort, two militia, and two Komatatis in it. See, she doesn't really want the Scotty to, to do the event either. So if she did the rule thing, which is how she would get the wealth, which is kind of what she's most interested in right now, um, the Scotty would get to, to put settlements down. She doesn't want them to have settlements down. She doesn't care about them raiding because that doesn't affect her control. The Siwatatis care about control. So she might just do the event anyway. Let the Scotty come in. Let's just do that. Let the Scotty come in. Um, but protect your town, keep your control. Let them come in and raid all they want, but keep them from having having forts and things or settlements and things. All right, that's what we're gonna do. So then, that's gonna let Doc, right? Doc, who's a chef? I guess he's a food doctor. Here comes the food doctor. Um, that's gonna give him a full action plus special activity. Now, really, the only command he can give right now, when I say action, I mean command, is raid. His other commands are have to do with him actually having people on the map. He has no people on the map. So he's going to need a raid. He's going to pick the maximum number of spaces. Why not? And this is probably what they should have done last game. But they, you know, they were enticed by using events instead. So if you're going to raid, you're either going to surprise or you're going to ransom. Ransom lets you roll to um, transfer money from the person you're raiding from. Like you kidnap their kid while you were raiding. And if you get a good roll, then they you get some renown. Which is good for the Scotty because they need renown. Surprise is probably what he's going to do, actually. Surprise lets you do a deep raid. Normally you can just raid from the ocean, right? Or from a settlement that you have. They don't have any settlements right now. So they're going to raid from the ocean. And the Scotty raid from... Here? I don't know what they can do. Yeah, they can raid from here, Ocean Oceanus Hibernicus and Oceanus Septentrionalis, um, and they can raid from Caledonia. Okay, but so that's that's a good amount. And the Saxons can raid from Oceanus Germanicus and Oceanus Britannicus. Right here. Uh, but deep raid lets you raid like an extra space in. Nice. And that's what you get to you get to use the coup de main, which is how you take down the towns. And taking down the towns gives you a, a lot of stuff. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a deep raid. I think you only get one deep raid space. And I think this place, Corno V, is looking nice and unprotected. Um we'll just kind of raid in the classic places, right? Nice little trio here. And a little right here as well. Keeping in the hills mostly because that's their their native terrain. And then here it's just because they And what do they roll? They roll 2d4. She has to pay four renown to do that. One, two, three, four. Um, nice thing about the Scotty is the Oceanus Hi Hibernicus is not patrolled. Just for some reason, historically, they never patrolled it, so it's not patrolled in this game. Unless there's an event that changes that. 
Okay, let's start. We'll go from top and we'll do all the less interesting ones first, and then we'll go to Corno V, where there's probably gonna be a battle and a coup de main, maybe. All right, six. That's a good amount of raiders, more than you need. Probably could have done some just one d4 in some of these and saved the renown. Probably would have been smarter, but Doc is excited to go. Um. Seven? Yeah, we did way too many. Way too many raiders here. All right. Demate. Five. And then finally, Corno V. Ooh, two. See, that's the one where she wanted to actually have a lot of people, but she didn't get it. So, she's not gonna be doing a coup de main there. Are they gonna counterattack her? So I think they get to if you do a deep raid. Assaults there use coup de main that raid. There may force battle with Scotty before raiders plunder. Eh. I don't think she's gonna do it. I don't think Bonzo cares. Bonzo's like, sure, take all the prosperity you want. You're not taking my town, I'm happy about that. There's not gonna be a battle, right? So if they battle, well, could there be a battle? So what are the coup de main chances even? I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, because if you coup de main them, the advantage of that is you get a bunch of, uh, of plunder. But that plunder, they wouldn't have anyone to carry it. They already have all the plunder they can carry, so... Yeah. It's a wash. Alright, bummer on the roll there. You never... So, how a raid works is you put out the call to all your, like, barbarian tribes folk and, like, kinsmen and friends and everyone who identifies as your type of barbarian. And then they either come or they don't. And you spend... You put a little of your reputation on the line to do that. That's what the renown represents. And then they might come. Um, so if you put more reputation on your, so you can either you can pay different amounts to do it. So if you pay more to do it, you ha you get to roll more dice basically. And there's different dice that each faction uses. The um, Scotty either roll one d4 or two d4, and the Saxons they roll what is it one d4 or three d4? Yeah, but they have to pay more renown, and they get fewer spaces. The Saxons do. All right, so we have to change the, we have to less the total prosperity by four, down to 76. The prosperity plus prestige will go with it. And that's the end of that card. Interesting choice by Bonzo to um, just kind of let the Scotty walk in. Um, we'll see, that, that might be the way to do it though. Suatatis are kind of a, a weirder faction. It's less clear what they're supposed to do. Um, though I think all of them have their quirks, definitely. The barbarians are kind of simple in some ways, in that you need to just raid a lot, and you know, and then return to get things uh, back and get a settlement on the board. Um, but I think there is some subtlety to that as well, like whether to pay renown to do it, um, where to raid. There's other, there's more to it than that. But the Suatatis definitely have like all the money, and they, they're concerned with that. They use money and control, which is kind of interesting when um, comparing them to the Dukes, because the Dukes kind of are suited to control. They're like very buff, but they're more concerned with the money of the people and not so much with Brit British control. All right, so here we have a big old block of text. Um, Stilicho, the Dukes, speaking of them, are going to get to decide on this Sarge is if not fragmentation which is not we're in Roman rule shift to Roman rule and military dominance place 10 cavalry from anywhere to Atrebatis where's Atrebatis this doesn't seem like something anyone's yeah this would be really nice if um... I mean I haven't read the whole thing yet maybe I should read the whole thing and then comment on it 
and or Kantiachi and up to five forts or towns into vacant town sites once until epoch train and muster place double militia and next recovery remove to available the number of cavalry that Stilicho put on the map. So this would be nice if this stuff wasn't already on the map. Basically right now it would let you put down like a couple towns and you can move some pieces around. That's pretty much it. I don't think that's, that's that exciting to Sarge. I think Sarge wants to do some damage. It's probably... Probably wants to get some glory and get that some of that plunder there back on the map. Um, so he's looking at an intercept. Intercept is a pretty cool move, um, but you can either go to adjacent spaces or to that are at friendly control or along the roads. But you can't go along the roads and then go to adjacent spaces from the road. So he could put. And this is going to let him like protect this place too. Yeah, so he's going to do this. He's going to move a couple from base here. Over to here, because he wants to protect that that town as well. Yeah, he's just going to kill them unless they dodge him. The evasion for, for clear is six. So if Doc can roll a six, the, the people are okay. He did not. He rolled a four. That's not good enough. So these two are dust. That's going to give him a prestige. for Sarge. And you can put one of the things back. Turn one prosperity to this base. That's going to get his prosperity plus prestige up even further. Pretty good counterattack so far, and he's got more coming. So he can move. Now, if he goes up to the hills, there's a lot more raiders. Um... If they don't get an ambush on him, though, he can kill four of them before they can, if he brings, like, two people up. He wants to keep someone back with his fort. He can kill four of them before they can even do anything back. Then he can absorb the blows with the militia that's there. I think that's probably good. So we'll send two up. Spend another two. They are going to... They have a better chance of evading than... An ambush and you know if they do an ambush it's gonna be a little weak so they did get to evade so they don't even have to fight he's just up there now um, and I don't think he wants to mess with these he could send his some people there but he's got a town to protect here he's got a fort to protect there I think that's gonna be good for that so let's see what he wants to pair with that um, that command you can pick Either invite or retaliate. Retaliate is only has to do with just attacking enemy strongholds. There are none right now. Uh, the Siwatatis and the Dukes are ostensibly working together, even though they are struggling for political dominance. So you're not going to like the Democrats and the Republicans in the United States of America. They're not going to like burn down each other's houses yet, though it could come to that point in this game and maybe in our life as well. Um, so invite is his only real option. So why not do it? Get some um, get some Federati on the map. Now where do we need some protection? Doratrages. Guess. Doratrages. I think I remember that's actually how that's pronounced. Would be good. That's a weaker place. It's got a town and there's no one there. So let's go ahead and put a Saxon Federati there. those nice Saxon warbands. Saxons haven't even gotten to move yet and they're getting puppeted by the master puppeteer, Sarge. Alright, but now they get a move. They can take this lame-o event 
doesn't help them at all. Um, or they could act first on the next card. I think we know what um, our average guy here, Dougie, is going to choose. He is going to choose to go on the next card. Wouldn't you do the same thing if you were Dougie? Isle of Avalon, five cavalry from casualties to available, or five cavalries from casualties to out of play. There are no casualties, so the event does not matter. Um, so it's going to be some standard raiding, right? Now, the, the options that the Saxons have when they raid are different. The, the feet options they have are different than the... Um, the Scotty. The Scotty get surprise plus or ransom. Um, the Saxons get surprise, which it works the same way, I assume. And they get ravage instead of ransom. Now, ravage can be a bit of a double-edged sword because what it does is it makes it makes there be a chance that they lower population. And the Saxons have two pr pr uh, potential goals, right? They can either have control exceed 10 Control means they have a settlement there and they have the most pieces. Um, or, and control has to do with population. So it's the population you have under control. It's not number of spaces. So if you lower the population, you're, le you're not going to be able to control as much, right? Um, or they can have their renown exceed 30 and at least four Saxon settlements on the map. So it's a little tricky. Now, is there anything like plump and juicy looking for a deep raid? There is kind of. This one right here wouldn't be bad for a deep raid. Now, if you ravage, the, the ups, upside is that you get to plunder more stuff, basically, which is which can be nice. So you can get a lot more renown. So ravage is kind of a good option if you're going for the second victory option, I think. Um, and it can also help to rapidly put a dent into the prosperity of Britain, which is what the Dukes win early on. All right. I just want to hear what the music's doing, because I haven't heard anything in a while. Okay. I turned down the music a little bit so I couldn't actually hear that it was playing through the headphones. I'm sorry I'm not listening to it. I think it would be inspiring, but it's also very distracting. I have enough to, to like process in my head without the, the awesome genius that is Joe D'Agostino's creation. All right. So we're going to raid for sure. We're going to raid in three spaces. We're going to go big. Probably want to hit these fens. This place definitely. Could raid in Kantiashi. I think we're going to. Well, this is a good good person to go to if we're wondering about this. So let's talk to him. We have our cab driver, Dougie. Pro bowler's tool tour. So he likes to knock things down. Handsome, aggressive, intelligent. It, it just seems kind of obvious. He's going to want to ravage. Though he wants to knock down, he could want to knock down that town too, but I think he's going to just full on ravage. And, um, he's going to spend six renown on this. Bring him down to five. And he will go ahead and ravage in the fence. Which is kind of bad if you're going for the second one right or the first the first one having 10 control because you're, you're gonna have a better chance of controlling the fence right um, and I think he'll take yeah these seem kind of about the same in terms of opposing units I kind of like this one better though because it cuts off the roads from the north if he can like do enough damage there, right? If he can get rid of Britain control. All right, so we're gonna borrow the Scotty's dice for this. He gets to roll three, four. And we got six, seven. We have to less it by the number of forts 
along the ocean. So four. That's a little not so good. Now I think if you use a feat generally with your raid command, they get to attack you before you do stuff. I'm pretty sure. No assault. Duke since it Oh no, you get to plunder first in this case. So you're gonna plunder everything from there. So you're gonna even if they like they get to counterattack after you plunder, but the the gold is still gone, the most you're gonna be able to put back is one. Nice. Those work together so nicely. Um early. Alright. And now do they want to attack there? So we got the fens. Which make it easier easy for them to dodge. And at most they're going to get rid of so the cavalry can get rid of two of those. This guy can get rid of one and it's going to get rid of him. Um, leaving one guy left. Yeah, I think they're, they are going to. So let's see if they can evade this. They evaded so it doesn't matter. Alright. Going south now. There we have seven. Again, that's going to be four because of those forts. Kind of the same thing is going to happen except there's going to be no counterattack, right? See, now you see like how last game could have gone much different if they hadn't spent their time messing around with settlements early on. You kind of got to you gotta knock uh, Britain down a few pegs before you try to settle there. All right. Now we have nine minus three. That's going to be six. So that's their best. Not war bands. We need raiders. Five. So Chad, if you're still here and you hear me, I was wondering what kinds of games you enjoy. Um, like what do you like to do? Do you like to play games? I assume you do. If you, but maybe not. Like I, I sometimes watch video game Twitch streams, but I don't necessarily play those games that I'm watching. But I still enjoy watching people play them. So, um, so if you're here and you'd like to tell me that, I'd be interested. What kind of games do you like to play? I forgot to roll for population loss. No there. Yes here. So what happens when we have population loss is we get to put a little marker on the board that reflects the new population. And then we get to put refugees in the Suatati's available forces box. With the rule feat, they can resettle them somewhere else. No more refugees. Okay. So they did so much damage that people had to leave. They knocked out. So I just want to make sure I am accounting for everything all right. So we've got a total of um, 12, 13. 80 minus 13 is 67. So I did not account for it all. Great. All right. So the... Um, Scotty, do not care about this event. The event does nothing. They're going to pass and get some money back. Um, Sibitatis also don't care about it, but they're probably not going to get to act on the next card. So they are going to... What can they do? So they could trade to get a prosperity. They could pass, which would also give them a prosperity. Um... Unless there's a space with two towns, they could. Is this not? They could muster. I think Bonzo is just going to wait it out, see if there's something else going on. What, what, what do they get when they pass? They get three. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to go get something to eat and come back in a little bit. Maybe should I leave it going so you can listen to the music? Nah, I'll, I'll save the energy because I'm sure this takes extra energy to be streaming. And then go eat and I will come back. See you later. Oh, I, that's not actually what stops it, is it? <laughs> okay, this is what stops it.